Hey everyone, if you're new here, I'm Jake, and today we're looking at a bootcamp from Tech Elevator. As someone who graduated a bootcamp and became a software engineer, it's fun for me to come back and look at these different companies that offer these programs and share any criticisms I have of their curriculum or anything I think that they're doing that's really great. Keep in mind, I have never met anybody from Tech Elevator or any of their students. I'm simply reacting to the marketing materials they have on their website, so please head over to techelevator.com and check them out yourself and take what I have to say with a grain of salt. So today we are looking at their full stack program. They have full-time, part-time, online, and on campus. Under on campus, you can see that they have a couple different locations that are available. Um, so I think that that's great. I think in person is personally the way I prefer to learn, but um, it seems that they offer both online and in person, so you can make that choice for yourself. They have a lot of details here about kind of the, the construction of the program and what you'll be doing day in, day out. Um, but it is kind of important to notice that they teach both Java and C Sharp courses. So the previous courses we were looking at, I've seen a lot of uh, React in the front end and then Express in the back end or Python in the back end. Here we're, um, we're separating this between C Sharp and Java. So I would assume that for C Sharp we're learning .NET in the back end and maybe something like Razor for the front end or perhaps Angular for the front end. Um, but we'll get into that and find out a little bit more. It's a little tricky to find their curriculum, but you can get it. Um, and I have already um, downloaded it, so we'll jump into that now. So again, like I said, they have a Java course and a .NET course. I'm going to take a look at the .NET course because that's the kind of bootcamp that I went to. Uh, I'm just more familiar with .NET, so um, I, would, I would recommend taking a look at both of these and deciding which makes the most sense for you. Uh, um, think about you know, what job and what part of the coding industry you wanna be a part of and what skill set would be most valuable there. Uh, that should help influence your choice. Like I said, I'm more familiar with .NET, so I'm gonna review that part of the syllabus just because hopefully I'll be able to be uh, more helpful in the review. Okay, full-time program outline. So the program consists of four modules broken into three core topics and a capstone project. So modules one is for the first four weeks, so introduction to programming in C-sharp through the hands-on development of a series of command line interface apps, C-sharp language topics covered include variables and data types, conditional and iteration logic, object-oriented programming, file I/O and collections, unit testing, debugging, version control. Okay, cool. So it sounds like basically we're gonna be making console apps for the first four weeks and kind of focusing on the basics of coding and the context of C-sharp. Um, looks like we're touching on object-oriented programming, which is gonna be important. Um, file I.O. and collections, that's good. Unit testing, debugging, version control. Yeah, I think that this is a pretty solid, um, this is a pretty solid first step. I like that this program is starting in the back end and teaching you a static language. These are two things that I think are, are, are really good. I've complained before about boot camps not teaching static languages and here they are teaching a static language and starting with it. So I think that that's great. It's a little bit more traditional, I think, and um, I like that a lot. I don't see anything about data structures and algorithms, so um, maybe something like that would be nice to have in this section. And also, I like that this is four weeks. Um, even though this is like a small list of things, I think other boot camps I've seen will try to cover this in two weeks, so half the time. But we're here we're giving you a full four weeks, so hopefully the, the, you know, you're really competent at these subjects. Okay, module two is weeks five to eight, so another four weeks, and that's client server, client server programming in .NET. So an introduction to data persistence using relational database management systems and writing client server apps using RESTful web services. So, okay, so now we're into relational schemas and normalization, um, SQL, SQL server. Uh, okay, great, so it sounds like we're gonna spend some time on SQL, which I'm glad that they're not throwing in any no SQL stuff. Uh, networking and HTTP, yeah, this is a good time to kind of touch on that. Web services, APIs, and REST, okay, cool. So now we're taking those console apps that we built before and we're setting them up to be servers. Um, and then also have access to a database. And then we talk about JSON, ASP.NET, web APIs, and dependency injection. Is there any more to this? Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, I think these are great topics. Again, I like that we're getting four weeks to cover this. Um, this SQL stuff definitely deserves its own full week or two and just get really competent with SQL and feel really comfortable using it. And then bringing in ASP.NET to, to kind of build out our web APIs is, is great. 
um, and having some time to really get used to and, and feel comfortable using ASP.NET. And the rest of these things are just um, you know pieces that go along in that process. So yeah, I think this is a really strong second module. I like this so far. Okay, weeks nine to 12 uh, is, sorry, module three is weeks nine to 12. An introduction to writing web app interfaces using modern client-side technologies and techniques. So we're gonna talk about CSS grid and flexbox, JavaScript, DOM manipulation and event handling, Vue.js, and promises and asynchronous programming. So yeah, this is really cool. Um, I like that they're using, um, I like that they're getting in here and talking about the front end. It's interesting that they're using Vue.js. Um, Vue.js is really popular, um, but I would think React would be a little bit more popular. I don't know how well React mixes with ASP.NET in the back end, but if you were looking for something that mixed with ASP.NET in the back end, you would probably just use, in, in my point of view, you'd probably just use Razor, which is kind of like, um, or I guess it might be called Blazor now. I think that they have a couple versions of it, but that's kind of like their built-in front end um, answer. Uh, and then next, I would probably use Angular, I guess. Um, but Vue.js is a fine decision. It's um, it's really, really popular and people really like it in the development community. But yeah, I just don't see a lot of boot camps teaching it, but that's fine, I, I, Vue, Vue's great. Um, the rest of this is really good. And uh, again, I like that we get four whole weeks to, to cover this. So we're actually getting a good understanding of JavaScript. It would also be nice to see TypeScript in here especially because we're learning C Sharp and ASP.NET and maybe TypeScript would make this a more comfortable process um, and would sit in line with the C Sharp topics we learned. Would be nice to see TypeScript, but that's fine. And then promises and async. So yeah, I think this is a good, this is a good flow. Okay, and then finally we have module four, which is the last two weeks, 13 and 14. Um, so given a set of business requirements, teams and students collaborate to use everything they've learned throughout the program to build a fully functional .NET web app. Uh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I, again, I like that this is a two-week program. This is a two-week project. I still wish that maybe we were spending time working on an existing code base as opposed to building our own new one, um, since that's more realistic to what you'd actually be doing um, when you begin your job as a software engineer. But I do like that this is a shorter two-week project, and we're not spending a whole month like some other code um, boot camps I've seen doing a project. Okay, and then afterwards we have job placement assistance, so career services. Um, it's interesting that they don't mention this as part of the curriculum. So maybe this is something that, uh, okay, so this is probably something that happens after. Let me read this. Tech Elevator provides career readiness, coaching and training, as well as job search assistance as part of the Pathway Program. The Pathway Program runs in parallel with the technical training. Okay, so I see, as we're doing the curriculum above, these are happening at the same time. So for the first couple weeks, get to know the program, work styles, career paths. Okay, so this is interesting. And then weeks four to nine, doing things like resume, HR and technical interview practice, and then LinkedIn building, and then connection careers, employment matchmaking. So employer matchmaking, job interviews, and recruit recruiter job fair. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. They kind of do it in parallel instead of having its own time section to focus on it. I think that's fine. A lot of these things, um, you know, don't necessarily take a lot of time anyway. So having just some time at the end of the day, every week maybe set aside to start tackling a couple of them is, is probably fine, except for these uh, interview practice. Um, so yeah, getting your data structures and algorithms down and then take doing your interview practice is gonna be, um, you know, a bit, of, a bit of work and consistency. I would recommend for, you know, someone that has, is a complete beginner in coding to at least have, you know, five or six full interview practice sessions and the more the better, really, at the minimum five or six, and each of those can take 30 to 45 minutes, so that's maybe, I don't know, five, six hours of work. So it, end up, it might end up taking a whole day to do, and you don't wanna do it in a full day, I guess, but uh, anyway, I don't know, I'm kind of beating a dead horse here. This is fine, though. Um, so yeah, that's that's what they have for their curriculum. I think, in all in all, this is a, this is a really strong curriculum for a .NET program. Um, I know I might be uh, a little bit biased because that's the kind of program I, I have or I took when I went to boot camp. Um, but in reference to that, I think they actually did things a little bit better than maybe uh, the boot camp that I was looking at in that they spent like a lot of time focusing on each section and made the project only two weeks at the end. So I really appreciate that. The one thing missing I see here is the emphasis on data structures and algorithms. 
uh, whether you like it or not, that's going to be a major part of the interviewing process. And even if you did the recommended interview practices here, and even if you amped it up to what I suggested previously, which is maybe five, six interview practice sessions, and maybe if you did 10 or 15, you will still struggle if you did not take time during this learning process to learn data, uh, data structures and algorithms. And I only see a very cursory covering of it in, a, in the, these sections here. So that's something I would be worried about. Um, I mean, even if you, you learn all of these things and you, know, you spend time working on um, you know, doing interview practice, um, you know, the interview itself is a huge part of the process and I feel like it's just kind of getting um, maybe left by the wayside a little bit here. So that's my thought process. If I was summing, someone coming into this program, I think that this whole, most of this is really good. So I don't know if I would necessarily ignore any of these sections, but maybe say, take some time of this last week, two week project here um, or, and try to spend more time learning data structures and algorithms. And honestly, the program is so short that like once you graduate, I would maybe spend another week or two working on data structures and algorithms uh, just to cover that gap before I went out and started interviewing. So um, just a little bit of supplemental studying to go along with this is what I would suggest. But overall, I think that this is a really realistic and this is a, this is a really strong um, curriculum outside of that criticism. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks for suggesting Tech Elevator. Uh, and definitely comment down below if there's any other curriculums you'd like me to look at and subscribe if you'd like to see more. So thanks.